Although EFT is rooted in acupuncture and Chinese medicine, in many ways, the sanctity of Chinese medicine has been forgotten in the EFT world. This video is to help you understand how Chinese medicine infuses EFT. And today, we will be talking about the sore spot and how that can be interpreted from a Chinese medicine perspective. But before we get into that, let's talk a bit about the basics of the sore spot from an EFT perspective. So let's start off by talking about what is the sore spot? Well, the sore spot denotes an area of the upper chest that is sore when pressure is applied. It does not have a specific point location, nor is it associated with a specific meridian or channel. Now, all the other points in the basic recipe can actually be traced to being specific acupuncture points and having their own specific meridian that they rest on, but not the sore spot. So the sore spot is not in the standardized clinical EFT point protocol known as the basic recipe for this very reason. Because the sore spot and its location can vary from individual to individual, it makes it difficult to measure when doing clinical research studies. So this leads me to my next topic. You know, where the heck is this sore spot? And like I've been saying, the sore spot could range in location from person to person. But EFT master Loretta Sparks has created a definition that may or may not feel true to you and your body. So try it out. So she says that the sore spot is located about three inches down from that V-shaped notch at the base of your throat and three inches to the left or the right, roughly in line with your nipple line. And I believe she is referring to the vertical nipple line here in this definition. So if that definition of the sore spot doesn't quite resonate or feel true to you and your body, there is another definition of the sore spot that might be helpful to you. So I found this uh, video of the sore spot and I've linked it below, but it offers a practical way of finding the sore spot. And you do this by extending your arms out to the side of you and then folding them in so they land on your chest. And where your fingers land on your chest is roughly where the sore spot is. So each individual can refine this location even more by pressing and rubbing around to find the sorest of sore spots for themselves. So that being said, the sore spot could be far from the sternum, it could be on the edge of the pectoral muscle, high on the chest, low on the chest, etc. The sore spot isn't going to be the same for each person, but generally speaking, the sore spot will be above the horizontal nipple line. It may or may not be in line with the vertical nipple line, but it will always, always be tender or sore upon palpation. Now we get into why is the sore spot used? So the setup statement was initially created to address psychological reversal or secondary gain. And the sore spot is an extension of this and can also be used to address psychological reversal or secondary gain. So when can the sore spot be used? This kind of ties in with why it can be used. When you feel that psychological reversal or secondary gain is determined to be present, you can utilize the sore spot. So instead of tapping on the side of the hand for the even though setup statements, you use the sore spot instead. You rub the sore spot instead. So let's bring this to life with an example um, that you might see when you encounter and identify secondary gain as being an issue in one of your sessions with a client. So do note that secondary gain or psychological reversal is very complex. It's a very complex issue that requires a lot of rapport uh, to be able to be broached uh, with your client and to be able to be brought up in a session. So this is just an example slide for the purposes of um, teaching you how the source spot would be used once you've identified secondary gain, okay? So in this slide, you're going to notice that there is a potential um, setup statement that embodies a very, very common secondary gain phrases, okay? Uh, but this isn't, you know, the end-all be-all of, of secondary gain. It's much more nuanced than this, but this is just for, for teaching purposes here. So let's say you've, um, 
you're going to use the sore spot and you've identified that there's secondary gain that might be in play. So you start with a setup statement. Even though a part of me doesn't want to be free of this issue because, and now these next statements are the most common forms of secondary gain that you might encounter um, in your client sessions. I deserve to feel bad or a part of me doesn't want to be free of this issue because I won't be safe if I get over this or even though a part of me doesn't want to be free of this issue because it helps me receive love or a part of me doesn't want to be free of this issue because I won't know who I am if I release it etc right so Rubbing the sore spot here, you would use a setup that described the specific secondary gain that your client is experiencing that's relevant to your client's issue, and you would repeat that normally three times as you would with a normal setup statement. But this time, you're just rubbing the sore spot instead of tapping on the side of the hand. After that, you would, of course, jump into the normal tapping round, tapping on all the other points as you normally would. Okay, so that's just kind of an example of how you would use it in practice. Um, but what does this, this idea of sore even mean? So to me, this idea of a point being sore, it, it, it kind of leaning towards this idea that it's a very subjective experience for each person, meaning that each person will have a slightly different location for this point on their own bodies. So let's talk a bit about what Chinese medicine has to say about the sore spot. So in acupuncture, a sore spot that is without a specific location or is not a specific acupoint is called an asher point. So it's a category of points um, that are termed asher point. So asher is directly translated as meaning that's the point. And it indicates some degree of discomfort or pain when pressure is applied or it is palpated. So in Chinese medicine, an asher point is part of a category of points that don't have specific names, they don't have definite locations, and they are not necessarily associated with particular meridians. All that categorize asher points is the fact that they're tender to touch and they respond in a form of pain whenever pressure is applied, either by the patient or by the practitioner. So in Chinese medicine, these points are sore or they're painful to touch because they represent places of pent up or stagnant qi and blood. So while I was getting my doctorate um, in acupuncture and Chinese medicine, our classes were, were very hands-on and we tended to practice on one another, locating points and, and doing acupuncture on each other, etc. So when my classmates would be poking around on me trying to find osher points, they would press on a point and that was particularly tender and I would say, ah, that sure is the point. You know, just making fun of Asher points. Okay, okay, you you get the point. <laughs> Dr. Mo, don't leave your day job, and I agree with you. So let's put this all together for you. And um, here, so the sore spot in EFT can actually be likened to an Asher point, right? The location of the sore spot for every person could be different depending on where they feel the most tender or the most discomfort. So some people's sore spot could land on a meridian and some people's might not land on a meridian at all. Similarly, some people's sore, sore spot could be on an actual acupoint and other people's sore spot might just be a random place on the body that isn't associated with a meridian or a specific acupoint. So, um, but because the sore spot is usually isolated to the area above the horizontal nipple line in the upper chest, you can make a guess as to what meridian the sore spot might belong to. So the most common meridians that are likely involved um, in sore spots are the stomach, spleen, lung, or kidney meridians. So you can look up the trajectory of these meridians and see how they traverse the body. You can look it up on Google or find an acupuncture book. Um, But in this way, you can see which one you might be tapping on when you tap on your sore spot. 
And then you can refer to my ebook uh, to see what the Chinese medicine significance is for that particular meridian, which is associated with your sore spot. So do, do check it out. I've linked my my website below if you're interested in purchasing this this ebook um but other than that i really hope you have enjoyed this teaching with dr mo i'm dr mo and we will talk and tap soon